There goes Mr. Speed King himself, passing on a curve. Hey, what's the matter, lady? Your arm broken? Hey, hey what's the big idea? All right, pull over there, Jack. You need to hog the whole road. Lady, 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 that stop sign means you. What you're saying is one of the most interesting and important experiments in driver education today. And it proves that some people really do drive like six-year-olds. For example, most of our traffic and motor safety problems are created by a few childishly inconsiderate drivers. Drivers who play childish but dangerous games with everyone else on the road. Lady, lady, that stop sign means you. Well, if bad driving habits are childish, when is the best time to learn to be a good citizen behind the steering wheel? Well, based on the old proverb that as the twig is bent, so is the tree inclined, at Garfield Elementary School in Phoenix, Arizona, a new approach to driving safety education has been developed. School children are learning about the automotive age before they learn their ABCs. Driver education begins soon after school opens for kindergarten classes, first, second, and third grades. First, a magic safety show dramatizes the basic rules of safety. Each year's magic show is new and different and wonderful to behold. And while they're watching the rabbit that comes out of the hat and the mysteriously changing stop sign, even the smallest children learn that the big men in the blue uniforms are their friends. The familiar games of kindergarten have been modernized to teach a life-saving lesson, the meaning of stop and go. First graders get out into the big wide world to learn by doing. Traffic lights, traffic signs, crosswalks become familiar through first-hand experience. And as for jaywalking, oh, not these kids. It seems that the younger we are, the faster we can learn new things. And it seems the earlier we learn something, the more likely it is to become a part of our basic character. Almost every small child has the capacity for learning courtesy and sportsmanship. And these are the simple basics of good driving attitudes. On tabletops, with tiny cars, first graders learn an awareness of the rights of others and the need for rules and regulations to protect those rights. At first, it's hard to see why we have to stay on the right side of the road especially when we don't know right from left. But safety consciousness is something that can be learned along with spelling and arithmetic. And more fun, too, even though it means learning how to wait your turn with self-control and good sportsmanship. But toys are just toys. There's nothing like the real thing. And here's the real thing. Real tires with real air in them, headlights at work, a horn that blows. This car, mounted on blocks, is called the Phoenix Link Trainer, patterned after the famous aviation trainer on which so many pilots learn the fundamentals of flying without leaving the ground. Now, while he's learning, young Mr. Future Driver may rack up quite a few miles without going anywhere. But one proud day, there's that temporary driver's permit as a reward for all the hours of practice. This is it even though it's only a beginner's driving course. Yeah, the first time behind the wheel of the one-boy power automobile in motion. But driving is a privilege that must be earned. Young Jimmy, for example, he had the idea that school was just about as bad as prison. 
And maybe if he absolutely refused to study, he might be sent home. And then he found out that no school, no driving. Today, Jimmy isn't exactly a top student, but he's in there trying. With the help of the older students, tomorrow's drivers learn how to take care of their cars before they drive on the advanced course. The advanced driving course has just about everything that the American motorist encounters in his driving about town and across country. Highways, city streets, crosswalks, pedestrians, traffic signals and policemen, and of course, country roads and detours. Everyone takes his turn at being driver, pedestrian, or policeman. Traffic violators get tickets and are brought to trial before a jury of the classmates. Now, crime just doesn't pay. This batch of hot rodders have had their licenses suspended for a day. At a most impressionable time of life, an important rule of society is learned. Laws are meant not to restrict, but to protect. For three years, in the first, second, third grade, children learn through actual experience the reason for safety laws. They develop self-confidence and the respect for the rights of others. Courtesy and cooperation and sportsmanship are practiced until they become habits. Once established, these habits pay off. And when tomorrow's drivers outgrow the small cars, Safety on two wheels is stressed in the Phoenix program in preparation for the day when actual driving instruction begins. Hey, do you remember your first driving lesson? There seemed to be so many things you had to learn all at once. But this high school student has been driving since kindergarten days. And now, behind the wheel of a fine, modern car, can concentrate on becoming an expert. And with a built-in code of driving ethics, she can soon become a responsible member of the driving community. Even the hot rod addict with his craving for speed is given a chance to release his youthful energies without injuring himself or others. Hot rod clubs organized and supervised by local and state police stage special races under established safety rules. Now well, there's plenty of speed here, but the boys themselves will drop a member for even a minor traffic violation. That's a tougher sentence than a police judge could or would impose. While most teenagers behave themselves at the wheel, well, there always has to be someone who's the exception, someone who hasn't learned that safety makes sense. In the judge's private chambers, the juvenile traffic offender appears with his parents for a friendly but a serious discussion of his case. If he has recklessly risked his own life and the lives of others, his license is suspended. And he's sent to Phoenix's Attitude School for five two-hour classes. In this Attitude School, state, county, and city police officers tell how laws and ordinances are passed by the people for their own common protection. Scientific tests and instruments are used to explain depth perception, reaction time, and muscular coordination, and to emphasize the importance of looking where you're going, of being on your toes, of being careful. Written examinations bring out the fine points of driving. And finally, the Attitude School students ride in patrol cars to see for themselves why safety is important. In the past few years, thousands of graduates of the school have had their licenses restored because their attitudes have changed through better understanding of their cars, and their laws, and their policemen. The parents and teachers and the police of Phoenix don't claim that they've found the perfect answer to the problem of educating drivers for tomorrow, but they have shown what one community can do to help make streets and highways safer and more pleasant for all of us. And here's an interesting sidelight for you to think about. One of the least expected dividends of the program is an improvement in adult driving habits. You see, parents, in setting good examples for their children, learn to be safer drivers themselves. They have to. Tomorrow's drivers 
won't excuse careless drivers.